Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com and I am your GPR professor and I'm blessed to be back with you today. I was on a trip for a couple weeks um, and I've been playing a little bit of catch up so I apologize for a slight delay in the uh, videos coming out. Um, but you know, I wanted to uh, make sure that I got one back at you. And so I was away in Australia for almost two weeks and I was there, I did a presentation at a conference, I did a workshop at a conference, I did a, a, a GPR boot camp, a three-day event uh, in Sydney while I was over in Australia, and it was just an amazing time, incredible you know, trip. I met so many professionals out there, uh, and I learned so much, you know, as well as uh, uh, I hope taught people you know, plenty. Um, and so what I wanted to do was, was give you a topic that was brought up three different occasions, three completely separate, independent, occasions during this trip and so clearly if three individuals or three groups of people had uh, uh, you know a wonder about this I figured that some of you might also be wondering about it um, and so what the topic is is in order to measure the depth of a target right where do you measure your target right where at what point in this hyperbola are you measuring the target's depth um, this is something that was brought up to me prior to this trip, but it was kind of three conversations over a two week period really reinforced the importance of me doing something like this. So I've had some debates with people, uh, uh, certainly over the years about, about what's you know, appropriate. Uh, and there isn't necessarily a right or wrong answer, but what I'm gonna do is give you what I learned, and then I'm gonna give you maybe another way to think about it, um, which I think is, is ultimately kind of the best that you can get as far as you know, the closest you can get to a right answer. Um, and so we'll, we'll go ahead and, and, and take care of it. While I was over there in Australia, um, I did a coaching in a sense, right? I did, I, I went to dinner with somebody who actually won a contest of ours for a free, uh, coaching session. And they happened to be in Australia. And when they reached out and said, Oh, can I still get my coaching session? I said, you know what? I'm going to be there. Let's go out to dinner and do it face to face. So, uh, thanks Josh, by the way. So this uh, 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 individual you know, brought something to my attention. It was a paper that I had not read and a concept that I had not seen before, which basically the paper was called, what's true time zero? What's true time zero? So when you're measuring, you know, your, your all right, well that's not working. Maybe this one works. All right, so when you're measuring, right, you're measuring time, right, where does zero start? Right, where does zero start? Does it start here? Right, does it start here? Does it start here? So I'm using red and blue as positive and negative polarities of the GPR signal, okay? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go view another one of our videos where we, I discuss this in a little bit more depth or hop onto our you know, online platform to learn a little bit more about uh, uh, polarity. Um, but where do you measure it, right? Do you measure it here? Do you measure it here? Do you measure it here? Uh, where do you measure it? Well, in this paper that he brought to my attention, actually see if I can use blue a little bit better, right? So we use that as positive. And here we'll actually have another one like that. Okay, so this would be a one dimensional trace as if it was going right down here. So where do you measure zero? Where is your ground surface? That's what it's basically asking, right? Where is your ground surface? And what this paper ended up finding out was when the author reached out to, I guess, six different Here's the way that I, you know, it was presented to me. Six different manufacturers, six different manufacturers gave a different answer to this question. Where is the ground surface? Here, here, or here, or somewhere in between. Where is the ground surface? And they were getting answers something like this was one, you know, right through, you know, the, 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 the peak amplitude of the first band was one. Uh, you know, maybe it was the peak amplitude of, of the second band. So they got six different answers to this question when reaching out to six different GPR manufacturers. And it gets into this issue then is who's right, right? Which one of these answers is right? Where is the ground surface when you're collecting your GPR data? Which piece of this is your actual ground surface? You hit the ground, it comes back, which piece, you know, is it? Where exactly do you begin to measure the ground surface? So that's what they came up with. They found that six different manufacturers had six different answers to this question. Well, 
When I was learning GPR, somebody who's smarter than me and knows more about GPR than I do, said to me this. They said, you know, you can do it different ways, but I, this is by quoting them, thanks Dean, by the way, he said, I measure it from the first break, okay? And so in a sense, what that means is he's measuring it from there. The first break, the first, you know, signal, first piece of the signal is where it's measured. I've had some discussions with people over the last year, you know, or so since Learn GPR has kind of been out and a lot more people are reaching out and have issues. And by the way, feel free to comment below with, you know, what you think about this or comment below where you have measured the ground surface or where you have measured the depth to your target. You know, comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. So he said it was the first break. And so he said he measures the, you know, the, 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 the ground surface as the first break. So when he told me this, that's how I've done it ever since. Now, where do you measure the depth of the target? Okay. I've had people tell me that you measure the depth of the target. You measure right where your target actually is. When you're, you know, how deep is it? From this central band. Okay. From this central band. Whatever the central band is. And people have told me the reason that people, you know, that, that technicians uh, um, get incorrect answers for the depth of rebar, for example is they're measuring it here, right? So here, instead of here. And they said that's why, right, that this difference right here, okay, is why, um, is why people get it wrong. Here's the problem uh, uh, with that. It's, 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 it's a faulty argument. And it's because there's no, you know, and here's kind of where I'm gonna bring it to you now. There's no universal in where this should be. So who's right here from the manufacturers? The truth is, there is no right answer. There is no right answer. The right answer is this. The only way to measure the depth to a target is by being consistent in your reference point and your target's depth. So if you're going to measure your ground surface as the first break, you have to measure the depth to your target at its first break, right? As its first piece. So the top of this first band right here is how you're going to need to measure it. Right? Right here. If, on the other hand, you're measuring it, you know, starting here from the top of the second band, then you have to measure it to the top of the second band for your actual target. Because the distance between this and this is the same as the distance between this and this. So in either case, you're going to get the same depth estimate. What you have to be aware of is trying to measure your ground surface from its first break, but then your target from you know, the second band, right? So measuring it, you know, your, 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 your target, if you're measuring the first break here, right? So you're measuring it actually right, right when it breaks, but you decide to measure it right in the middle of your second band, that's gonna be wrong. The only main piece is consistency. So as long as you're measuring it, you know, and this was a great, this was just kind of described very briefly, but, but very easy and eloquently by uh, a friend of mine up in Canada, thanks Troy, um, where, you know, first break, you have to measure the target depth of the first break. If you're measuring the second band, you have to measure the top of the second band. Okay, if you're measuring the middle of the second band, you got to measure the middle of the second band for your target. In any case, right? These are all the same distances, all the same depths. And so that's all really that matters, is consistency. Where do you measure the ground surface? And wherever you're deciding to measure that ground surface, right, band one, two, or three, you need to measure the depth of your target to that same exact spot. First break, first break. Peak amplitude of your second band, peak amplitude of your second band. Either way, you can even measure the bottom. You measure down here, you better measure down here. Right? Because this is going to be the same distance, okay, to this. So it's got to be, I wouldn't recommend it. I would I still continue to go with the first break, but as long as it's consistent, you should come up with the same numbers. I encourage you, go look at some data, try it out, and say, look, if I do my ground surface to this point, let me measure down to the top, you know, to the top, to the top of my target. If I go in the in the peak amplitude of my second band, let me measure to the peak amplitude of my second band for my target, and see if you're getting the same depths.
Okay, see if we get in the same depths. Uh, I, I suspect that you will. So I hope that this is helpful. I hope it might clear up some issues. If it doesn't make sense, then let me know in the comments below. Always feel free to reach out. Um, I'd love to hear your comments, your questions. I'm going to answer your questions right here on YouTube or on our blog. Um, you know, we're always happy to hear from you. If you have not done so yet, go over to learngpr.com. Put your name and email address in. You'll get our free introductory video, um, which goes over some of the basics of GPR, as well as we'll send you these videos to your inbox every single week. I appreciate your time. Good luck.